Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Chingo Chats. I am your boy Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. What's up, everybody? We're coming off of a pretty deep episode, so we're just going to get into something super light. Uh, Very deep. And keep it short, because we'll keep the intro short for you guys, because this is going to drop on uh, Monday. Basically, your last stop in Salt Lake City. That's it. Only one show left. I am a stand-up. Boom. I'm a stand-up comedian. My very last show of the year, last show of the tour. It might be the last show ever. We don't know. But hey, Salt Lake City. Uh, we'll see you guys November 18th at Wise Guys Comedy Club. Get your tickets now, chingobling.com. Spread the word. Tell a friend. Salt Lake, November 18th. And that is it. We're done with the Freedom of Speech Tour. Yeah. Come on, ahead. Us. Maybe you'll never see me again. It's my farewell tour. I'll never. It's like George Strait. How many farewell tours has George Strait? No, but real had? talk. I really, for next year, I mean, there's so many reasons. Number one, traveling's a pain in the ass. Two, you're about to have mandates for domestic travel, possibly. I don't know. Uh, three, some of these states you go into, mm-hmm. they might start requiring the fans to have a jab or me to have the, the poke. And um, and more than anything, man, it's just such a grind to try to juggle everything we have going on and you're constantly having to fly in, fly out, fly in, fly out. Yeah. So what we'd rather have is be able to fly in guests, badass guests on the podcast so we can make it uh, you know, a really fun time. I was I sent you that clip last night. Did you watch it of Theo on Rogan where he's talking about his his you know, like he's finally like we signed on the place with Ro- Rogan and for those listening, uh he's got his comedy club. He's just trying to rebuild that that Mitzi Shore environment that he had in the late eighties and, and nineties at the comedy store. And that's what I'm trying to tell you, bro, which is the game is coming to me. It is, man. Rogan is bringing, you know, he's trying to get uh, Theo Vaughn to move to Austin. Thompson Girl is already there. You got all these people. The game is coming to me. I'm about to start speaking like Kanye around this bitch. Like, the game is coming to Texas. The game has changed. You know what I mean? Like, for everybody to try to blackball me in the radio game or the music game and all this crap... The game has changed. We're we're into podcasting now. You cannot stop what we're saying. Yeah. Um. So maybe for touring next year, I might just be. I don't know. I'm gonna just try to hit as much of Texas as possible. Just driving type of stuff where you can, if need be, if you're doing a big weekend in Dallas or something, you can bring the nanny, bring the kids, get a big Airbnb, let them play throughout the day, and then at night, mom and dad go to work. Um. So we shall see. Yeah, we'll see what 2022 kind of kind of brings because the podcast could also have a big role in that, depending on how big it grows and, and in what direction we could feel like we could do live events with podcast fans. Because there's people from all over, but Texas in general, you gotta you gotta expect a lot of the listeners that are from Texas and a lot of these red states that know what freedom's like. They sure as fuck don't want to give it up, and they're down to to support people that support freedom. Yes, sir. Yep. Mm-hmm. What if what if uh, instead of hitting like a bunch of clubs like you were able to just work theaters would that make more sense you know if you were doing a like a half half of the tour size but it was all in theaters you mean like oh i'm like gonna go to, i'm gonna go to salt lake but it'll be a theater this yeah, time yeah yeah what you mean oh yeah in a perfect world i mean that's gonna make it more appealing where it's like like right now present day when we're as we record this it's like right after we're done we're gonna go have a play date with our kids you know what i mean because it's like man dad's just been running in running out hand juggling merch and this and you know they got to go do that they got to go do this now he's podcasting but he just flew in from over there and uh, he did irvine on a wednesday and then he had to do a, a whole weekend in houston and i'm not complaining but um but like tomorrow i gotta leave to vegas mm-hmm. for one night one show one night one show and i'm shadow banned it should be two shows at least in a perfect world so yes if we were to be doing theaters you know if we had it like that yeah then it'd be like you could be more picky on some tim dillon shit where it's like all right man the only way i'm gonna go to dc you know what i'm saying is gonna have to be a big ass theater yeah speaking of kanye uh i've I've been seeing a lot of people tweet like man these this current kanye interview is making me go back Mm -hmm. to old kanye yeah you gotta go binge the old stuff and see just how ahead of his time he really was yeah, and I know we did like a whole uh, Chingo chat already on this, but I feel like we kind of have to have a, continu- a continuation of it because I've caught more clips of it, but I haven't sat down for the okay. whole thing. We could use it as a springboard and see where it takes us. But um, dude, he literally went from fifty million in debt not that long ago to nine billion, and if you go back and watch uh, some of these old interviews where he's he's. It's like there's a disconnect with the communication. It's like you go watch these old clips when he's on the Breakfast Club. Yeah. And these are old clips like when before Charlemagne started going to the dermatologist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And putting the creams and stuff. Yeah. Like he even looked a little different. And Charlemagne is just just harassing him, like, yeah, I'm not crazy about that album. You know, I don't know what sound direction you're going in. Why are you complaining? He says, Charlemagne tells Kanye on this old interview. <clears throat> he says, um, 
bro, you're over here. You seem so materialistic. You're over here crying and complaining over like, why don't I have a big backer? Why won't I get this joint venture type of situation with Nike? Um, you know, why are you worried about Louis Vuitton? And why are you worried about the clothing industry so much? And why not? If you want to be a revolutionary, he's like, revolutionaries I love. They did it. They got it out the mud. No, no money. And Kanye's like, bro. And now when you look back at it, it's like, you're you're literally seeing a dude that's ahead of his time trying to explain some shit. Yeah. And the, everyone else in the room doesn't see the vision. They just don't see the vision. And you can't knock them because I'm sure 99% of the people who watched the interview at the time were like, why is he going on Sway Calloway show uh, when he's like, how Sway? He's like, Kanye, if you want to have a clothing line, you can go screen print some stuff, spend a hundred thousand, you know, you got it. And he's like, it ain't Ralph level though. You don't, you ain't got the answers, Sway. You ain't got the answers. It's because what Kanye was wanting to do, his vision in terms of, he was basically saying hip hop is limiting. You're, it's, it's a losing game. He's like, it's like the coal miner. You're the coal miner on this plantation. He's like, you're never going to get ahead. You go out, you do this big tour and everyone's screaming your name. And, and, you know, there's women and the liquor and all this. He's like, but you come back in debt. And meanwhile, everyone else done monetized off your music. And he's like, I got these 10 contracts. And he's, he was basically like, don't marginalize me to music. I know y'all like my music, but you don't know what I'm about to do in the fashion industry. And... He was trying to explain, like, look, everyone that I have in my crew has gone on to be the head of Louis, the yeah. head of this, and or become their own multi-million dollar brand. Has he been tried to, has anybody, I mean, I'm sure they have, but refresh my memory. How many times, if at all, have they tried to cancel Kanye? <sighs> and, has um, it, and has it really worked? No, obviously, right? No. Yeah, it hasn't worked. Um, I mean, they, they institutionalized him. I mean, they put him in a medical facility. They sedated him. They hit him with medicines. So when you go back and listen to the Rogan interview he did, Rogan's telling him, he's like, wait, wait, wait. He's like, so what was the issue? Why did they put you in the hospital and drug you up? He said, he said, because I said slavery is a choice. He said, I wasn't talking about old school back in the day, whips and chains slavery. He's like, He's like, I was talking about the, the record business. Like, we are signing up and volunteering for slavery. He's like, they're raping us. You know, he's like, these contracts, he's like, they are raping us in this game. He said, that's one. He's like, oh, so they took that out of context. He's like, yes. He said, also, when I was campaigning to run for president, he's like, there was a, cr a clip of me in, I think, South Carolina or something. He's like, well, I'm crying on stage because I'm thinking and talking about Plant Parenthood, oh, uh, daughter, Margaret right? Sanger, how she was for depopulation, how she wanted to reduce the black population. He's like, we are, he's like, the black population should be twice what it is today. He's like, we are so enslaved mentally. He's like, we have no idea this culture of ab abortion that's going on. And he's like, my dad didn't feel he had time for me. He's like, thank God my mom didn't abort me. And then he says, um, I thought about the possibility of, uh, he's like, I was too busy. He says, uh, one of the main proponents of abortion is males between 31 and 37. He's like, that's how old I was. He's like, I thought I was too busy. He's like, thank God we didn't do that. And he basically said, that brought me to tears. He's like, so between me crying over the thought of us aborting our kid, and, and he said the possibility of Kim and I not creating the family we currently have, and me saying slavery is a choice, that was it. They came, put him in a straight jacket, threw him in a thing, and now he's walking around with the Britney haircut. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ro so, Rogan, so Rogan was saying, Rogan was basically saying, he's like, bro, he's like, so people don't understand. He says, everyone I talk to about you, they say he doesn't make sense. He rants. He's all over the place. He's like, well, maybe you just have a lot of energy. He's like, if anything... He's like, dude, I wish I knew you better. I would have just had you put you through a tough workout to burn off some of the energy and, you know, just keep you out of trouble so that you don't end up on these medicines. And he said the medicines turned him into a shell of his former self. He's like, it just grayed everything out. He said it, it killed his confidence. And it, he's, he feels like it just like put, um, like covered up his pineal gland. But mm -hmm. he's just like, all of a sudden, my pineal what, gland. Pineal gland is his penis. I'm just kidding. Pineal gland. Sorry, everyone. Uh, I stand corrected. <laughs> so he was basically saying, like, it fucked up my genius. Yeah. 
Well, glad the good thing he's off of that shit, and, I, and it's kind of a good segue of, of us uh, fucking um, cancel culture. Hopefully, cancel culture is canceled for good in 2022. Like we can stop this bullshit. But uh, you're familiar with Dave Portnoy, right? Yeah. Have you heard uh, his latest hit piece from uh, Business Business Insider? I know a little bit. I saw a piece of his statement. Okay, I hadn't. So uh, this is just something I happen to come across with him on Tucker, which he does frequently. But uh, and I also, I think Business Insider changes their name to just Insider. Mm. So there, I don't even know if they are an entrepreneur kind of business publication anymore. It just kind of seems like they're a tabloid. They're mm. just like, a, what's that? What's that real famous tabloid uh, that you always see at like uh, grocery stands? The, the Inquirer, right? Yeah, Inquirer. yeah that uh-huh. bullshit. So, the founder, of course, of Barstool Sports. He's a cultural icon. Portnoy is not especially political. He seems a lot more interested in stock tips than election polling. But he is unapologetically American. Always has been. He thinks you ought to be allowed to say what you really think in this country, even if NBC News doesn't like it. So that attitude and his success as a publisher has made Portnoy a massive threat to legacy media organizations. They truly hate him. So last week, they decided to destroy his life. A sleazy little blog called Business Insider dispatched a robot reporter to snoop around in Portnoy's sex life. They didn't find anything illegal or even especially surprising, but they tried their best to humiliate him. Now they're harassing his advertisers. The question is, can this business insider, whoever that is, succeed in killing Dave Portnoy? And that's a question that anyone who's interested in free speech and the free exchange of ideas should probably care about. To answer it, we've invited Dave Portnoy himself to join us tonight, and we're grateful that he has. Dave, thanks so much for coming on. So, so the, I guess the rules are, they don't like your posture, the cut of your jib, your attitude. You don't take orders, so they send some little robot to snoop around in your personal life, don't find anything illegal, but print all this stuff anonymously about your sex life and then try to destroy you? Like, these are the rules now? Seems at eight months. So I've heard about this uh, article, this hit piece that they had in the works for eight months. I'm talking everybody that was attached to me on social media, people I didn't even know, people who talked about me, every single person attached to me, this reporter reached out and basically had leading questions. Hey, any dirt on Dave Portnoy, anything bad to find? They found virtually nothing. Two examples, I'd argue, uh, both which I have unequivocally provided proof that they're not telling the truth. Beyond that, not only me, there's one instance, there's an actual police report that reads like it's from The Onion. I'm basically accused of going to a local cookie shop um, with a different (laughs) girl every few days. So that is the gist of it how they are allowed to publish this, and they couch it in a very, I guess, I guess, smart for them. They never accuse me of anything. They just lead you to water and want you to drink with sensationalistic headlines that if I read about myself, not knowing me, like, ooh, this is a bad guy. If you dig into it, there's absolutely nothing there. They reach out to their advertisers, our advertisers, as you say, and said, hey, are you advertising with Dave? Because we're going to write an article about how bad he is. What's the proof? Our own article. I've offered them the chance to discuss it with me with their own cameras, their own recorders, as many people as they want to have a discussion so we can go back and forth. I can say, hey, these facts directly dispute what you wrote. They won't do it. They said, don't talk to us. They won't even discuss it. They print and run. They print and run. It's disgusting in its character assassination. My lawyers have said, just let it go. It'll go away. I'm not going to let it go because this is this behavior. I've never been attacked like this. I've been attacked for two decades, but never escalated to this length. And frankly, it's scary. I didn't know that you could do this. Mm. So it's interesting. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck Business Insider. So uh, this is one of the main reasons why, um, for the longest, I kind of liked operating under the radar. Yeah. Uh, number two, this is another reason why I really don't do media interviews. Like, the the picture they showed of Dave before they brought him on air, it looks like a red carpet type of thing. Mm-hmm. Like he's, he's up against the, uh, the logo banner type thing. Fuck all that. Yeah. I, I fuck all that. Like I'm I'm gonna be the dude that's like you ain't finna catch me slipping like that. Yeah, I don't I have no interest in doing none of this little I I love doing this. Yeah. You yeah. can see me on here on my shit uh long form. You ain't finna take me out of context. Um but yeah, you saw the dude from Houstonia Mag went to my show, mm-hmm. took little notes, pretty much gave away a whole like my whole script like, yeah and then he went into this and then he told a story about this and the bit the final bit after that and then the punchline there was this and then his dad said this and da, 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 da. 
And it's like, that's what they're doing. They, you know, that's what they be doing. That's how they operate. I know this might sound like an RPT type of um type of conversation. However, it's culture. Super cultural. It's culture. And uh, the Kanye thing was a great segue because, you know, to tie it back into Kanye, the minute he'll say anything spicy or provocative, right away they try to hit you with the crazy card. You know what I mean? How many times they hit me with the um, uh, white, what they say, want to be white, you think you 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 think you about to have some Republican fans now, and you all up on Trump's nuts, and you think the Republican Party finna da, 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 and they want to deport you too, and how you go from this to this, and you made money off Mexicans. And da, da. I told you yesterday he's a brown face of white supremacy. That's Honestly, how they look at you. I know, and the crazy thing is, I haven't lost anything. Yeah, I'm like Joey Diaz, boy. I'm harder <laughs> to cancel than a Columbia Records subscription. Um, like, what have I lost? Oh my God! In LA County, you might see a decrease. What show, what clubs are there in LA County? Hollywood Improv. How many does that hold? 125 seats. Yeah, y'all was locked down anyway. Yep. I ain't lose shit. I increased. So, uh, it felt really good saying that. That way, um, y'all lost everybody who wanted to shut me out. Like I get it. You're not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. That's fine. You know, you don't gotta make everybody. A fucking disciple but this cancel culture crap it, it, I, I don't know if um how many years from now people will be able to kind of understand it solidify it and decipher it and like deconstruct it and look back as this at this phenomenon in terms of like who started it what, what are the origins of it what, what's the main goal of it you know what i'm saying mm. like is it just as a as a weapon as a tool like, why are they get going after Dave Portnoy? Is it because he's Mr. <clears throat> well, he's Mr. He's Mr. He's Mr. Online, right? He's Mr. Independent. He's Mr. I started Barstool Sports from like a newspaper kind of organization, a college campuses to like this huge media conglomerate, right? Which is still super independent. And he says what he wants and he doesn't give a fuck what you think about it, similar to what you've always been about. But also him having other shows, like, I don't know how many, like I, I pointed out to you one time when... Apple created, uh, so if you guys go to the to the podcast app, you'll see that Apple now has channels on the podcast app. The Barstool channel, I believe, has like 50 plus shows, like 50 different podcasts with different hosts and different, you know, uh, genres of, of podcasts. Portnoy himself does a ton of them, and a lot of them are around sports, sports betting, gambling, uh, sports teams or whatever. So people like... I don't want to say specifically who, but like people at ESPN are known to just not like him. So these people who you see on TV, you know, your Shannon Sharps and Max Kellermans or whoever, or the other guys, Skip Bayless and stuff, those kind of people, not saying them specifically, maybe, but those kind of people hate people like Dave Portnoy because they're taking away from their audience. Nobody wants to watch that garbage on ESPN. Those kind of, those guys suck compared to what they do on the internet. You're talking about like Max Kellerman, yeah. Shannon Sharp. Who are all them. going in on Kyrie Irving or going in Aaron on Aaron Rodgers. That's garbage, dude. Man, y'all so goofy. Y'all are so goofy. Like, honestly, I don't even pay attention. I don't watch ESPN. I don't pay attention to what Shannon Sharp or Max Kellerman got to say. But when it comes into the debate of Aaron Rodgers, you know, is he a white domestic national, whatever the fuck, right? They, yeah. go, they, they finna dig up a case on him shortly. They working on it. Well, his, uh, his go ahead, go ahead, finish your thought. Well, his um, punishment or whatever came out yesterday, which the the league's fining him fourteen grand for lying about the COVID protocols, fourteen thousand dollars, and then I guess the commission is fining the NFL three hundred thousand. They're they're fining the Packers three hundred thousand dollars for lying about, you know, for not wearing a mask down on the field and for all some other goofy bullshit, which I haven't read. I just it came out last night, I think, or yesterday, and I read about it somewhat this morning, but. People were expecting him to get suspended. They wanted, they were, they were hoping that Aaron Rodgers would be suspended. The Packers are killing it. They're because he's an anti-vaxxer, anti-masker. Yeah. Oh my God. You know. And then Rogan was talking about. I don't know if you know this, but one of the reasons why, or probably the main reason he didn't take it, is because he's allergic to one of the main ingredients in the in the poke. That's not allowed, bro. You're not allowed to be allergic. I know, dude. I know you're absolutely right. <laughs> How dare I be allergic to this fucking shit? And they're still going after him. Like they're making, a, they're trying to make a bigger example out of him than even Kyrie Irving. They want to crucify that white boy. He's white. Yeah. <laughs> boy, hey man, I'm glad I'm not a white boy. Boy, they coming after white boys so bad. They coming after y'all's freedom of speech. Um, you know, hey, if you a white boy or white girl, and you you applying for Harvard or one of these colleges, you better say you something else. You better not say you white. 
dude. <clears throat> this is crazy. Facts. Facts. It's already been proven. And that's why Ibram X. Kendi had to delete his tweet because um, basically they discriminate against against white people. It's not, oh, there's a professor, bro. I know this is very RPT. But okay, I'm, I'm roll a, with it. I'm going to keep it non-political. There's a professor. I don't know his name off the top of my head. He, um, they try to cancel him. I think, I don't know if it was at MIT. It's okay. an MIT professor. They tried to cancel him because he made this revolutionary statement where he said, basically, we're going to go based on merit and like equality, not, not this other weird identity based gender. Um, what is it? Equal outcome communist style shit. He's like, we're going to, he's like, call me crazy. But I suggest we go back to just merit who knows the answer? Who's putting in the work? Who's studying? Who's a good student? Blah blah blah. And they try to cancel him for that. That's the that's the level of stupidity we have right now going on in our culture. And if anything, it just fired up more students to want to go hear him speak at, at a whatever event. I don't know if it was going to be at MIT, but a lot of these kids are like, "Hey, hey, call us crazy too." Hey, total non sequitur here. But did you Perfect. ever use dating apps? No. No, no, never. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Were they a thing when you were in, on on the dating scene? Really? I mean, other than like, I mean, I, I don't know if you were on like OK Cupid or no, or no, no, mate. I mean, eHarmony or some shit. Like, let's just say if I was single, maybe those apps were around. <laughs> okay. But uh, that might have been. I think. Okay, how about this? When did uh, Tinder and Bumble and all this stuff become like a more mainstream thing? I want to say it was like 2010, 11, 12, is when it really started popping. Okay. Huh. No, no okay. I never got into that. So this is, I, I tend to not really try to, if I'm, if I'm on social media, it's usually because I'm posting something purposeful for the podcast or whatever, right? Or maybe the candles or some shit, right? I try not to get veer off from that because it's easy to get sucked into these holes, right? Facebook or Instagram, the, just the constant like whatever, videos, clips. Facebook, they have like a whole news section now, which I'm not going to go read, but it's like HuffPost and Vox and all that yeah. left shit. Mm-hmm. But this is from Law and Crime, and I thought it would be something interesting to bring up to you. A Nebraska woman will spend the rest of her life behind bars for the horrific abduction, torture, murder, and dismemberment of a female store clerk who she met on Tinder. A three-judge panel on Monday handed down a life sentence to uh, Bailey Boswell, 26, after she is convicted of first-degree murder in a 2017 slaying of Sidney Loof, prosecutor said. She basically convinced this store clerk to go back to her apartment with, uh, I guess she had somebody else there, like her dude or some other guy, but she basically chopped up the body into different pieces, put it into bags, and then spread it out throughout a trail on an old, on, a, on like a dirt road to satisfy her sexual fetish. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Damn. That's one of the craziest stories I've ever heard. <clears throat> Life sentence, huh? Life sentence. She Whoa. would have been the second person in Nebraska to get uh, the death penalty, but they require all three of the prosecutors to, uh, prosecuting judges or whatever, to, to uh, confirm that, and only two out of three did. One of them <laughs> said that they didn't see enough for the death penalty. For some oh, reason. my goodness. And this was all through Tinder? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Mm. Dude. Mm. I don't know, man. I do not know. Uh, Most of her remains were discovered on December 4th along multiple sex, along with multiple sex toys and a dog leash in a, plastic, in a plastic sauna suit, per the World Herald. Some of her body parts and organs, including her heart, were never found. Ooh. Dude. This bitch ate the heart, bro. Bro. This bitch ate the heart. She went out into the woods and just started a, a ceremony, you know? To the raw, the God. Boy, there are some sickos out there. Y'all got to be careful, man. There's some, um, what's his name? The, the dude that ate the dudes uh, up there from the Midwest. J- what's his name? Oh, I know who you're talking about. That Fuck. Was, that was I, crazy, too. I know everybody's screaming the name right now in the car. Like, it's fucking nuts. Uh, the guy. The guy that had dudes in his fridge chopped up. Like, like they were tamales in the freezer, bro. I don't remember his name, but that's disgusting, man. It's fucking, it's crazy some of the shit you'll read online. Like, if you go down that, um, like, uh, the, 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 like, law, what's the, the crazy story? Mystery, unsolved mysteries kind of thing. You, you can't believe it. You'd think some of it is straight out of a movie or a novel, but that shit happens every day. Mm-hmm. Yo, I can't wait, uh, going back to Austin, I can't wait to actually perform in Austin. Yeah. Uh, maybe next year, right? And I can't wait to go hit up that scene in austin um shout out to george perez sam tripoli those are some people that i know from from the la scene um maybe when they're in in town 
you know, we go hook up with them. And then my boy uh, Dave J, I worked with him on the HBO thing. Mm -hmm. We just shot the, the Latino Laugh Festival thing. Oh, the Ha, sorry, the Ha Comedy Festival. Um, so yeah, man, maybe we'll be rubbing shoulders with the with the motherfucking uh, you know, the what is he called, Death Squad and all yeah, that. Yeah. Um, it's just amazing how right down right up the road in our backyard the comedy game is is, is like the game's coming to us is what i'm trying to tell you yeah i'm glad you brought it back to that too because I, when i was listening to rogan describe that whole mitzi era um it's kind of like what you somewhat heard here in houston with the old uh was it laugh stop mm -hmm. we hear like people like Muammar and and um who else Some, everybody yeah everybody that everybody. performed here would say like that was a place right houston everybody. once had a scene yeah, like that joey diaz yeah you hear everyone talking rogan's about first special was here in houston and it just never kind of came back after that, after that 90s kind of stint for, you know, two or three years. What is it? Sam Kennison would mm -hmm. perform here and uh, Bill Hicks. Dane Cook recorded because I guess they were they were set up to tape your stuff. So yeah. some people are like, OK, well, fuck it. That's going to be my album. And the, and the reason I was really thinking about that, because the way that this pandemic has kind of happened here in Texas, there's been a lot. Of, it's ebbs and flowed, right? Like wheels, you know, put these mandates on us early and said, you can't do this, you can't do that. But, uh, you know, it's come around on a lot of things earlier than most of the country. You know, maybe some might say following suit with DeSantis, which is whatever, fine, better for us, better late or better sooner than later. But it, it might be the perfect area to really have a resurgence of this kind of what was the LA comedy scene because Texas is, you know, no fucks given in the sense that like you're not going to stop us from living our lives and getting back to what we know we're supposed to be able to do. And comedy needs a home where you can say and do what you need to make that craft like as good as it can be. It doesn't need to go in the opposite direction where it's Canada where you just have no freedom of speech. You can go to jail for telling a joke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know, right? What a crazy concept that in 2021 in America, we're having the discussion where... You know, in order to perform stand-up comedy, you have to be able to move around freely throughout your fucking country, you goddamn idiots. <laughs> you stupid motherfuckers. Y'all gonna fall for this dumbass Vax passport QR code check-in everywhere it's under fucking mass surveillance, 1984, double think, double speak. You know what I'm saying? Like, they changing the definitions of shit. Boy, I swear to God, I never thought as an American. Never Boy, you thought. think my daddy crossed that bridge for me to be over here not free? What if you just went into your bit right now? <laughs> it's like, fuck it, they already wrote about it. I know, right? <laughs> but it's like, think about it, bro. Like, we're, we're discussing this art form of, of uh, stand-up comedy where we're like, it requires a few things. It requires a comedian to have the room to play and to find the line of like, what line you can't cross? What can we say? How free are we really? Not to mention, you kind of need the freedom to move around freely and to be in a venue and to uh, not have to show your medical, your private medical stuff. How about just the freedom to distribute that content that you work on? Let's just say it's a beginning of a joke or you're working on it or even it's the finished product on a special. The distribution, the distribution platforms right now are online. And if you're, reading, if you're getting censored, then it defeats the whole purpose of freedom of speech, almost the whole purpose of stand-up comedy, because you can't go here and say that. Maybe you can't go there and say that. Well, this state or country yeah. will fucking put a big fine on you or lock you behind bars. Well, yeah, in China, they'll scrub you off the internet. Or so where it's like you didn't never fucking exist. They won't find no trace of you. And I feel like I'm one step away from that here in America. Because, babe, y'all, I bet y'all not seeing my post right now. Yeah, well... You know, at Real Chingo Bling, it's 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 a real page. It's a real ghost town. But if you go to at what did he said, you know what I'm talking about? We got backups on backups. You know what I'm talking about? Fire. Oh, I got to play this. Uh, this is going to be a super short episode, guys. Half hour. Chingo's got to go play with the kids and do family time before he flies out. But this was funny, and I hope I saved it because I think I said this to my soul. Uh, two seconds. Two seconds. So it's one of your old songs. Somebody sent it to me on a video that I never would have... Uh, I never would have expected. Uh, is it really one of my songs? Because sometimes people... Somebody made a re... Uh... <laughs> it's like a lipstick. Dude, show the camera. Put the oh, camera on uh, you. Oh, yeah, my bad. Fuck, what am I doing? It's just like a lipstick fucking... It's a, some random some Asian a video. Yeah, some CCP video. And they did a remix. You know what's so crazy, bro? Is she eating paper? Oh, my God. No, I think she's wiping it off or something. Okay. It's some, queer beauty some, uh, some weird beauty tutorial. So that same song, version... I don't even know who did that weird remix. Banda makes her dance. 
it was also used in the background. Is that a TikTok? I think it was a TikTok that turned into a reel. That was on a reel. Oh, it's a reel. Okay, because I'm thinking like, man, I need to get credit for some of this shit. Yeah, for real. So I don't know if it's the same account or the same content creator, mm-hmm. but there was this other video that used that same remix, whatever that is. And it was um, like some Asian dudes creating like pottery or furniture. They're like pouring plastic into these molds and they're creating. It's like a cool engineering type of video with that same little beat behind it. And someone sent it to me. They're like, man, I follow this account because it has like cool engineering, like random construction stuff. And um, I heard your voice on there. (laughs) I don't know, man. It's a glitch in the matrix. (laughs) It's fucking weird. It's definitely a glitch in the matrix. Uh, but yeah, all right. We've done our half hour, guys. You got to get going. The wife's going to beat you with a bat if you don't. Bro, you got to promise me you're going to go and watch and absorb some of these Kanye I'm gonna, I'm interviews. I'm going to. Yeah. Because it's just like powerful, powerful. How do you go from 50 million in debt to 9 billion? And now he's on his way to make a trillion. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say this before we go. You brought up the alpha the other day again, as jokingly. When y'all, alpha, I was like, yes. What did I say? You said the alpha. You brought up the alpha the other El day. El alpha way. <laughs> alpha with an F, not a PH. And it reminded me, because his Instagram is like, is he Mr. Bugatti or something? Like he yeah, bought he a has Bugatti. Bugatti's. Okay, so it reminded me of T-Pain, where he's like, the, one of the worst things I ever did was buy that Bugatti. And he goes into the story about all the, you know, whatever cost him. And now he's like, Mr. Like, smart with his money. So I look at the alpha and I'm like, well, I guess you got to learn the hard way then. <laughs> Canelo has a Bugatti too. He's like, he <laughs> says, mi, bu- mi Bugatti es pitof- pitufo blue. <laughs> what? He says it's Smurf blue. <laughs> He says pitufo blue. Look, for starters, Esa es color azul pitufo. For starters, don't compare Canelo to T Pain or the Alpha. Let's be real here, okay? I don't know how he invests his money. I don't care. You're just just people in general. The characters of T Pain and the Alpha. You got Canelo. El Alpha. Or as people would say, I don't know if there's a picture going around of. Uh, have you seen it where people? It's it's just a picture of Canelo from his recent win, and they're like. Everyone knows who this, you know, Mexican is or whatever. And they're tagging at the What Did He Said page, but they're not tagging the at Real Chingo Bling page. Uh-huh. So it's just funny. People are like, that's Chingo Bling. <laughs> but it's Canelo. So so basically someone posted a picture of Canelo, but they're tagging at What Did He Said. Yeah. They're saying like, who, who is this real Mexican? Who is this number one? Whatever. It's uh, the question. They're like, oh, that's Chingo Bling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. hilarious. But that's funny that they're tagging the What Did He Said page. I know. Me. It's weird. I'm seeing a lot of that. I'm getting more tags. I see more tags where it's like Chingo Bling related stuff. And the crazy thing is I try not to mess. Like I let Rob post everything. I don't want to be the kiss of death. I, don't, I do not want to post anything on the What Did He Said page because it just knows like either it's how I write my captions or it's the type of shit I post. I don't know what it is, but it's like. The algorithm knows when it's me. Yeah, most of the, it used to be pretty 50 50. I post most of the stuff, but uh, Chingo always replies to the stuff. So if you see a reply, it's typically from him. I don't usually spend time reading and replying. Sorry, that's Chingo that goes, goes ham in the comments. I'm talking about <laughs> Chingo de Mayo. And shout out to our Discord. Our Discord is, uh, is oh, so uh, fun. Is jumping. Uh, if we ever do shift off of Patreon, uh, we'd still be able to have our Discord, Discord and and everything else, correct? Yeah, uh, right now, like nothing would change except maybe. It's so okay. good point actually. It's integrated with Patreon right now, so when you sign up, like you see, like uh, like Alex joined the the server, right? It puts you in your channel, and I have a Captain's channel, and we have a Chingo Chats channel, which no one's really utilized yet. I think Matthew Carter is the only one that's really interacted in the Captain's channel, and he's one of the newest captains. So use those channels. I might even create a meme channel where it's strictly for the memes. The general chat is where everybody lives, which is cool. Everybody's living in that general chat. We're talking about all kinds of different yeah. things. But if we do want to like segment it, um, Patreon does it automatically. But going forward, we can figure something out if we ever leave Patreon for whatever so reason. it's linked. Okay. Yeah. So it, that, it won't like kick off. Like if we get off Patreon, it won't kick off everybody out of the Discord, right? That's you a have question. To re- re-sign up. I think you might have to reset something up. Shit. But uh, yeah. road to a thousand patrons is what we're on. So... Rockfin, they're based out of Austin. Are they? Yeah. I reached out. I was like, hey, fellas, sorry for the delay. I know you guys pay in crypto, and, you know, I'm not too familiar with that, but we should meet up soon in person. You know, they're also, they're based out of Austin. But uh, I'm just trying to put that bug in y'all's ear, man. Yeah. That, uh, you know, there's a couple red flags about Patreon. They'll kick you off for some shit you tweeted. So let's go find a... Some shit you didn't even say on Patreon. On Patreon, right? Uh, Let's go find a cool coffee shop and sit and chat. Maybe, you know, if Tripoli's around, doing Skankfest or something. Yeah, man. Shout out to Sam Tripoli, man. Um, Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know we jumped around a lot. It got political for a second. Um, But hey, I enjoyed it. I love podcasting. I want to do so much more of it. Unfortunately, tomorrow I got to hop on a plane. I got to be Mr. Travel Guy. 
Um, I'm getting too old for that shit. Soon you will be in the metaverse. You'll be able to listen right from your living room like you're actually there. Yeah, I just feel like, bro, I just feel like it'll be such a... I mean, touring is, you know, it, it makes money. It's great. It pays the bills. But I just want to be able to take that load off my shoulders and just be like, Rob, I'm here. Um, we got stuff to handle here. And I ain't got nowhere to go. Yeah. I ain't got nowhere else. I don't have to fucking hop on no motherfucking plane and go to these different states with these different governors and these different rules and, um, and play that whole fucking game. So I want to sit put for a while. Patreon.com forward slash red pill thermometer. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Let's catch up. Hit us up. Join. Sign up. And um and we'll we'll chat on the Discord and, and all those other good things. So se cuidan. Peace.